Right, I'm back. So what happened last time, whilst I was recording, was the microphone just stopped working. But we're kind of reaching the end of this tutorial anyway. What we've done is we've created this, which is by no means an unimpressive piece, to be quite honest. It's uh, very detailed, four and a half million polygons. We have obviously the robots from a previous part, the props are from the previous part, the weapons from this part that I'm recording. Although, you know. Anyway. The renderer I'm using, which is Keyshot 2.1, I'm obviously using the Pro Edition. I'm just going to hide that. So it doesn't need to be there. Um, it allows us to do quite a lot, as you can see. And I can set up a high quality render here if I need to. Other things I can do is I can change my environment and my back plate. Ploid? Plate. So, for example, if I want to use a car studio, I just drag it into here and it adopts the HDRI immediately. Here's a factory. There we go. So as you see all the reflections and everything are picked up correctly from the factory scene. If I want to lighten it a bit I'll just press the up arrow or down arrow to darken it and I can do smaller increments of lighting like that. If I hold down control I can move the environment if I left click at the same time. I'm holding down control and left click, move the environment around. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, there's quite a lot of things I can do in this, obviously. What I tend to do if I'm just using it for, obviously, a quick render is I don't tend to have it going for a beautiful walk in the forest. And you can, don't get me wrong, there you go. See, I'm uh, not exactly sure in what context this would be useful, but you can do things like this, and it allows you to create quick, easy environmental renders. It is the Luxian conference room. They included lots of fun things in here, really. It's that industrial thing again. Or here's Iceland. Because you can never have too much Iceland. There you go. Darkens the model up quite a bit, but we can just tap up twice and we'll pick up the highlights. So, what I tend to do is just throw it into either a simple startup environment like so, or even the HDR Light Studio jewellery. That's quite nice. The car one tends to be a little bit sharp on it, gives it some quite sharp high tones. You can stick it in this one, or the light version. Very good for if you're doing cars, these things, by the way, as you can obviously tell. There we go. Stick it back in this fellow again. So, what I can do in order to make a very pretty render. Now, with the demo version, you're limited to your render size. This makes sense, obviously. They don't want to give you like the full version of the software and have you using it for free. They won't make any profit. But um, what we can do is we can go down to our render, which is a teapot rather nicely here. And you can set all your render options, including your quality down here. Now rendering in this, funnily enough, even though it's a real-time renderer, the actual rendering itself takes an age. So rather than doing that, what you can also do is go into your options and set real-time. And we can actually dick around with our real-time rendering options. So we can increase our ray bounces to 10 and our shadow quality to 2.5. Have detailed indirect illumination and ground indirect illumination. You can have the ground grid in if you want. We can also have some bloom if you really want. There's lots of other things we can do in here. So we could also go into our camera and you can have depth of field. And then we can pick our focus. There we go. And that's our focal point just there. And then we can just adjust our focal stop to increase or indeed decrease as we see fit. So we've got plenty of options there. If you just watch it'll uh, slowly calculate the DOF for us. And it is quite good fun just to mess around with, obviously. When you're done you can just click done down here and it'll actually stop the rendering process. So what I'll do is I'll just 
adjust that. There we go. So, for example, if you want to get them to focus on the weapon, what I would do is perhaps close that, move my tar piece over here, and just swing it round so that we're looking at the weapon rather than looking at the rest of the robot. Go into options, depth of field, I'll pick my focus. That's perhaps this point in the midway of the gun. Then just lower my F stop a little bit. There we go. And that'll bring the gun into a much clearer focus than the rest of the model. And obviously the rest of the model is getting a much more detailed real-time pass than it was before. Love those little yellow things. So pretty. Now what I've done is I've saved this. If I just go to save as, you can see I've saved it as robot weapon. It saves it as a BIP file, which is the kind of thing 3ds Max thinks it can open. It can't open this BIP file. It's nice that, isn't it? Okay. Other things we can do, obviously, if we go to options, I'll just turn off DOF. There we go. And drop back into real time, just edit this back to 6 for the moment. And the shadow quality of 2 should be enough for us. Don't want any bloom intensity or anything like that. But, like I say, we can also make ourselves a nice render. Or, we can do a turntable. And if we do a turntable, what it will do is it will slowly rotate around. You can set your number of frames. It will rotate around the environment center, if you select this. And you get a classic turntable render. Um, I'm going to do all these things whilst you are obviously, you know, doing something else. But you'll see these images as part of the previews for the set when you go to have a look at it in the first place. And I'll try and include as many things as I can with this, so don't worry. Anyway, I hope you found this uh, interesting and hopefully a little bit enjoyable. Um, before I set up my render, which is going to take a while, so I'll just move this over to here. Because I want the weapon to be focused on this time. And render, let's see render settings, quality, that seems okay, the actual resolution needs to be bigger, uh, that'll probably do, on 300 dpi, this does make the model ridiculously huge incidentally, and I'm going to make this a 12 by 12 inch, Yeah, I'll have a 12 there. There we go. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click off the render, let it do its business. It'll save it as a TIFF in my renderings folder. And hopefully I'll have something nice that I will put up as the preview for the set once I've done a little bit of editing and malarkey to it. So I hope you found this interesting. And I hope you've enjoyed the weapon tutorial for the, obviously, the heavy-duty railgun, or uh, LFG, as I've decided it's going to be called. Um, section 4 of the robot, which I'm hoping to have out by Christmas, will be a melee weapon, which I'm still arguing about. So, you know, we'll just continue to clothe and grow our massive robot, and hopefully at the same time we'll grow and clothe your 3D skills. See what I did there? Cool. See you later. Bye-bye, and thanks again.